Hello trumpet players, welcome to our lesson for this week. Um, this week we're going to talk a little bit more about different pieces, delve into our book, so you should have, this is the French horn one, but you should have your trumpet tradition of excellence book sitting around. Uh, I'd like you to use that today, that's what your homework is going to be, is a couple pieces out of there. So if you open up to the first page, I have a scanned copy of it right here, but it's your fingering chart. It's kind of like what I talked to you about last week where I drew valves, but instead of just drawing circles, your book handles it in numbers. So first thing we're going to do is find our first note. And our first note is a C for us. And that is right there. It says zero, which basically just means no valves, right? Nothing pressed down. Now make sure that when you play this note, it is nice and in tune. Match pitch with me. Cool. Once you've tuned up that note, we can start talking about our next notes. Now, your chart has every note that the trumpet can play. We don't need all these notes right now. We only need the first five, and then I'm going to add one more today for the first six. So we have our C. Our next note is our D. It says 13 underneath. It does not actually say 13. It has a one and a three, which means it's the first bell and the third bell, right? So you're going to press down those two bells and give me this note, match pitch. <laughs> Next note we have is E, which is right here. That is one and two. Give me this note, match pitch. There's it. Next note is F, which is only a half step up. So it's right next door. Only first finger, match pitch. Last one you know so far, G is open, no valves. And today we're going to throw on A. Oh, not you, Siri. I was not talking to you. Next, we're going to throw on A. A is your first and your second valve. Press down together. Sounds like this. Now, it's the same fingering as your low E, but it's higher. So what you're going to do, like we talked about last week, is drop your jaw a little bit back and put your upper lip a little bit forward. Blow a little faster air and a little more air between tighter lips, and you'll get A. Right? Next up, we're going to pull out our metronome. We're going to turn up the volume on our metronome. Make sure we're going 80 beats per minute. Now we're going to do the same thing that we ended last week with, but do it up six notes and down six notes. So eight beats, eight beats rest. Eight beats note, eight beats rest. I'm only going to go up, you'll go up with me, and then we'll talk about what happens next. Ready? One, two, ready. <sighs> There you go. 
So every week we're going to add on an extra note on either side. So this week we added a note higher. Next week maybe we'll talk about adding a note lower. Now when you do this, I want you to pause me right after I explain this. Uh, when you practice this long tone scale, I want you to do it at least twice up and down. So you need to go up, down, take a breather, go up and down again. You should at least be doing this scale twice at eight, eight beats per note before you actually start playing anything. It's a great way to warm up. Now, we are going to go back to our books and turn right to page eight. We are going to be looking at numbers 17, 18, 19, and 20 today. So rain, rain is our number one. I'm going to walk you through the way that you're going to be able to learn how to read this and then you're going to do the work on the other three. So, knowing how you learned how to write with Miss Megan, you're gonna zoom in or kind of look at your music, figure out what notes are happening. So, we know that a musical staff spells E, G, B, D, F on the lines, right? Miss Megan says every good burger deserves fries. I say every good boy deserves fudge. Either way, it works, as long as you can remember one of those two. So, if we look at our first note, it is on the second line right there, which means it is a G. So I'm gonna write a G right above that, right? Go two down, what's on the first line? It's an E, right? Next is a G, a G, an E, scroll, up, G, G, E, F, because it's one up, right? One note up is an F. One note up is back to a G, G, E. G, E, G, rest, E, rest. G, G, E, F, G, E. Right? So, it is okay for now to write the note names above the music. You don't have to be completely fluent in notation yet. That's something we're working on, and one way to work on it is by writing the names above. Now, if you write the names above, you're not going to be able to pay much attention to the rhythm. So, we are going to ta and ta ah this right now. There are no t's, right? No t's, just ta's and ta ah's. <clears throat> so, here's our tempo. One, two, ta ah. Ta, ta, uh, ta, 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 uh, ta, 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 so pause that, rewind me, practice that until you nail it. And then once you've got the rhythm now, we can focus on the notes. So when you are ready to go, unpause me, let's do it. First note is a G. We know our G sounds like this. Make sure you match that pitch, make sure you get it. I'll play it once more, match it. whole thing. One, two, one, two, ready, go. rain rain we work that one out together notice when I play I am articulating with my tongue so I'm not taking a breath in between every note this is something we really need to avoid as brass players is sounding like this see how weak that sounds I want to ta 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 
every time you re-articulate a note, every time a note happens, your tongue needs to separate it. So if you're sending out a stream of air, your tongue needs to separate the air, not your lungs. So it's not right so focus on that focus on these little commas which are not just commas they are breath marks right as trumpet players you all should be one of the first instruments that actually master this doesn't take a lot of air to make this horn work french horn clarinet flute takes a lot more air to make those horns work. Trombone, baritone, tuba especially. So those are the only places, other than rests, obviously, where you are allowed to breathe. Which means you should not be taking air into your lungs from the beginning until here, beginning until here, beginning until here, here, and here. Those are the only places you're allowed to take a breath in. And you might not need to use all of them. Like these two rests, you're probably not going to have to take a breath between here and here. Don't if you don't have to. But when there is a breath mark, take that breath. All right? So I would like you to work on 17, 18, 19, and 20 this week. Do the same thing that we did on the first one up here. Write out the note names, circle your breath marks, get used to playing them, and I am going to play the other three for you, just so you have a reference of what they sound like. Some of them even give you the note name for a couple of notes, in case you lose your space. So I'm going to play in a minor mood, hot cross buns, and go tell that roadie, and then we'll wrap up. Cool? So this is in a minor mood. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> all four of those. I will tell you which one that I want recorded on the Google Classroom. So practice all four. I probably won't have you record Rain Rain since that is the most simple and we did that one together. But between In A Minor Mood, Hot Cross Bonds, and Go Tell Aunt Rody, I'm going to select one that you have to record and send to me this week. You do not have to re-record and send me your six note scale if you did your five note scale last week. If you haven't handed in your five note scale, you will be asked to do the six note scale instead and one of these pieces of my choice. Uh, now, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I am looking at emails and Google chats and hangouts. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you joining our next Zoom.